Mike here. A little update here on the uh, refrigeration system. Uh, it's been down for about a week. I uh, just fired it back up. Um, just doing some rough tests here. I haven't put the box back together. Don't have any intention of putting the box back together yet. Uh, what I worked on, and I talked about in the last video, were these uh, thermocouples that are sealed directly into the uh, refrigeration lines. Now this one's not too pretty, but it held, holds pressure, so I'm using it. Uh, out of the four that I made, only two of them really truly worked out. Uh, let's see, where's the... Well, here's the 3 8 one. Um, the issue with that is the epoxy that I use to seal these things actually drizzled down into the fitting. Uh, in the other ones, uh, the thermocouple uh, tip just kind of uh, keep it right in the center of the line or like in the top third and uh, seal the uh, this 3 8 Well, that one's 3 8 This one here is a uh, quarter inch. Uh, put a little bit of epoxy down in there and give it a couple of mechanical crimps uh, for a good, good adhesion. And then uh, uh, quickly found out that the uh, fiberglass sheathing was leaking gas through it when I pressure test them. But uh, all in all, the main problem was I was pressure testing them too soon and the epoxy wasn't curing properly. So I actually had it end up uh, cutting these, uh, shaving some of the fiberglass sheathing off and then encasing the whole thing in epoxy. So. This was probably the best one. This one was all done in one pour. Uh, let it cure for, I think, a good 24 hours, and it, it holds just fine. This one took a few uh, repairs, but I eventually got it. Uh, there was a, another one here. I'm not sure what I did with it. I mm, guess it's not that important. But anyway, uh, it looks almost identical to this one, but when I pressure tested it today, it had a little blowout and uh, a portion kind of side of this ended up getting uh, really milky and translucent, so uh, it, it, it leaked. So in the meantime, I went ahead and installed uh, the two that were good, and uh, some curious things about them. I had this one on the discharge of the compressor, so that's super heat off the compressor, and then this one is right before the, uh, uh, the refrigerant control, so that'll uh, the difference between those two is the uh, um, more or less the enthalpy change. My new mass flow rate. Um, but uh, anyway, I want to point this out. Uh, the first value there is the discharge. Uh, the second value is after the condenser and the receiver before the. Uh, so those are two sensors there. And the third one is actually up, and that's why I couldn't find it. Um, that's the um, the other sensor, the other thermocouple, uh, the one that blew out this morning. I went ahead and tore it apart, and I just taped it to the outside of uh, pretty crudely here of the uh, discharge right before between the compressor and the uh, good good inline thermocouple. Um, that's more or less the way that I was taking uh, readings before was on the outside. Um, yeah, you can see it there. Um, but anyway, as, um, as a friend of mine said it would, um, there's probably between a 5 and a 10 degree difference between taking the temperature on the, uh, the outside and taking it on the inside. Now, I'd imagine that uh, the closer you get to ambient conditions in, in terms of what the actual temperature of the fluid inside the, the line is, the closer you get to ambient conditions, I'm going to guess the closer those values are going to uh, correspond. I've noticed that a higher uh, discharge temperature, um, especially if I do something to the system that causes the uh, temperature to rise very rapidly, um, the one that's taken directly off the, uh, the uh, discharge vapor uh, rises much more rapidly than the one taken on the outside of the copper, and that, that's to be expected. Uh, but additionally, the, the temperature difference between the two is usually, it, I've seen 10, 10 or 11 degrees difference between those two values when this uh, actual temperature taken off the vapor itself is uh, 140 or more. Uh, but uh, something else with this system, I did add another pressure gauge here. So this is on the high side right before the uh, throttling valve. Um, I noticed that, let's see, what's high side pressure we're working at right now? High side is 255 pounds per square inch. This is propane refrigerant working with. That corresponds to 129 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the discharge temperature that I'm getting is 123. Uh, even the one taken on the outside is a little bit lower, of course. Um, so that's... 
suggesting to me that I have some non-condensable gases in the system. Uh, I quickly went ahead and charged it with some of the refrigerant of the propane that I recovered. Um, those bottles may very well have uh, been contaminated. Uh, I think at one point maybe one of them had gotten pulled down to a vacuum. Probably pulled some uh, atmosphere into it. So in the future, I need to be a little more careful about the way that I uh, uh, the way that I fill those bottles up. But no worries. I have some more thermocouples that are coming, and I wanted to do a test on these ones here. Um, to see how they're working and see if I notice anything that's going to change my construction technique. Um, so this will give me an opportunity to tear this system down because I'm going to add a suction superheat line, uh, thermocouple, and probably at least one more. Uh, eventually there's going to be several, several, several on this system. But um, whenever I tear this thing down, I'll pull these fittings out and take a look at it, see if I notice anything, you know, breaking down or any oozy goozy ooey gooey um, byproducts so anyway um, I'm not going to go into it too much I'm pretty well done for the day uh, messing around with the thing but uh, any questions or comments uh, you can comment check out the blog thanks